Hi everybody, Mark DeJesus here. I wanna take a few moments to share with you 12 mindsets that show and reveal that you are living with a victim mentality. 12 signs you live with a victim mentality. Now, the victim mindset, is uh, something that is very challenging for us to often admit we have, but it affects us all in certain ways because it bumps up against us whenever we are being stretched, whenever we are at a area of our life that we need to go to the next level. But this victim mentality, it's rooted in rejection. It's rooted in a rejection mindset. It wants to cap you off and keep you underneath limiting circumstances. Now, all of us have gone through difficult situations, some more traumatic than others. There have been forms of trauma, drama, and abuse that have really taken a toll on our hearts. And one of the things that we have to be aware of is that a victim mentality doesn't creep in because a victim mentality takes the negative experiences of our past and attaches them to our identity so that they become one with us. So it's not that we went through something, it now becomes a part of our identity and it becomes difficult to see ourselves outside of that. The opposite of a victim is an overcomer but a victim mentality wants to keep you trapped. And one of the primary ways you can detect a victim mentality is a victim thinks that there are no options and no choices left. I've done everything and now I have no choices. I have no decisions I can make. I have no options. So a victim mentality wants to be a rejection mindset foot soldier to keep you, and many of you are like on the verge of breakthrough, you're on the verge of another level, but oftentimes the last resort of the enemy's kickback is to use victim thinking in a situation, especially that you've been conditioned to see there's no hope. And maybe you have series and series, clusters of, of traumatic and clusters of very difficult situations that have taken you out and have conditioned you to live in victim thinking. Before I get into that, if what I say has been very encouraging for you and it bears witness with what you're going through or what you're wanting to break through, please subscribe to these videos, share them, get on our mailing list. You can go to markdehesus.com to make sure you do not miss a video and article or a podcast episode. And would you help us by donating? Go to the top right-hand portion of our screen on markdehesus.com, click the donate. You can do a one-time donation or you you can become a regular subscriber. Now, I want to get into the 12 signs that you live with a victim mentality. Now, as I share these, keep in mind that it doesn't necessarily mean you have all of them. You have to have all of them. You may even just have one of them. And I know for all of us, at least one of these will speak to you, if not more. And if they do speak to you, get my book, exposing the rejection mindset will help you to understand how to break free of this more and more. And without further ado, let's get into the 12 signs. Number one, and this is important for you to understand, you keep repeating the same set of reasons as to why you can't break free or experience good things. You keep repeating the same set of reasons. So you have these reasons that you keep cycling through. You cycle through the same story. Maybe it's the same story of things that happened to you in the past. It's those constant hurts. You keep replaying them to yourself and to other people. Or you keep cycling through all the reasons why you are stuck or why you are where you are. Now, here's the thing. When you share them, they're very good reasons. It's not that these things are like, so far out there. Most of the time, there's some legitimate reasons, but it's a problem. They're keeping you stuck. It's influencing your story so that the story you carry just stays negative, it stays disempowering, and you can't break free. I'm all about being honest with what we've been through. I don't ignore it, deny it, pretend it's not there, or just wash over it. I'm all about being sober about what happened. But we have to be very careful that the story doesn't continue in such a way that it now becomes something we regurgitate over and over and over again. Because what happens is the victim's story becomes a protective mechanism. Even though it's gross and hurtful and terrible, it's familiar. It's what you know. And the, the negative story that you keep repeating can prevent you 
from seeing a different story. It actually becomes a protective mechanism and doesn't allow you to see the breakthrough story, the breakthrough options, and really the different thinking that you need to connect to. Because when we break out of the victim story, it's very uncomfortable because now we have to you know, trust, we have to give ourselves room to hope again. We have to begin to be more positive, be more hopeful. And there's a lot of changes. And oftentimes what we want, this is something that's we really need to pay attention to. We often want God to rescue us. If your prayer is a constant prayer of God, rescue me, you may need to check the victim mentality because what you're missing as a believer is the power of God that's already available inside of you to think differently and make different decisions. There's always a decision we could lean into, learn from. There's always something that mm, maybe I'm not... Maybe there's a different way I could look at this. And maybe I just need to give myself time to learn that, okay? So this is the big one up front, is that you keep repeating the same set of reasons, the story, why you can't break free or why you can't experience good things. Number two is you constantly think others have an advantage over you. And it's almost like you have a radar for this everywhere you go. So for example, if you see someone who has a breakthrough, your victim mindset will look for the reasons why they have an advantage. Oh, that's great. They were able to overcome that stuff. Well, they had a good family supporting them. Oh, that person was able to get over that issue. Well, they had some money they ha and I don't have money. Uh, well, oh, that person came from a good family. Oh, that person's married. I'm not married. Or that person's in a good marriage. Well, see, my marriage is not very good. It's not very supportive. So what you do is you stack these great reasons and you look at other people's reasons. Uh, you put reasons on them to say, that's why they have an advantage over you. And you kind of feel like you are the chief victim in your situation, and it doesn't allow for the input you need to break out of it. Some people can even become uh, narcissistically obsessed over their victim state. Like nobody knows how bad it is in my life. And you become self-consumed with your pain and you become one with it. And now it becomes this impenetrable force that people can't speak into. They can't encourage, they can't give insight. And then you don't become teachable of the steps that you can take to break out. Because people who are empowered as overcomers always realize there's always an attitude I can choose. There's a way of thinking I can choose. There's always a decision I can make. No matter where you are in life, there's always an attitude, which is your state of mind, a thinking, which can include a strategy and a decision you can make in that moment. But a victim mentality doesn't want you to see that. Number three is your negative inner life always is always blamed on what has happened to you. So you're cranky because of work. You're cranky because of other people. You're cranky or you're in a bad place because of your spouse. You're in a bad place because of your environment. It keeps you from taking personal responsibility. It's like something outside of me is in charge of my disempowered situation. So your pain becomes like this asset that you hold onto and it doesn't allow you to step forward. It's like you want to, but you don't really want to because if you really want to break free, you have to let go of blaming. You have to go let go of looking at your circumstances uh, being the dictator in your life. Number four, you believe there is a conspiracy of the world against you. Now, this can come into play even with Christians that believe in spiritual warfare right? Which I believe in. I teach on it. We can kind of go, man, the enemy's really on my tail, right? The enemy's really kicking up. There's a lot of truths in that. I'm not going to negate that, but that can be used as a way to keep us in a victim mentality. Oh, the enemy just keeps, oh man, really under a lot of warfare. Oh, it just keeps happening to me. Man, we start stacking that we are victims of the enemy's arrows, and that starts to get us in believing lies that we don't see the greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Notice the language. Greater is he that is not up in heaven, 
Greater is he that is in you. See, a victim is looking for something outside, and we can attribute that in our Christianity, and it's an easy transition, right? God, up there, I pray to you, beg, come and rescue me. Whereas in Isaiah 61, the Bible says the opening of the prison to those who are bound, it doesn't say the, 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 the taking of the prison or out of prison. It says opening of the prison. God says the opening is there. You need to step up now, break off those chains, and step out into your freedom, right? So this is very, very important that we, 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 start, to, we start to understand the premise of the greater is he that is in us. I need to make decisions that are new, but we can get this conspiracy, but we're just under this assault, And that affects our story. It affects our perspective. And you can take even spiritual warfare terms and they now become disempowering. Listen, I believe in all of it and I teach it, but I I wanna teach it in a grounded way. And beware of falling under, oh, I'm always under attack. And now you're feeding this, I'm stuck because of the warfare I'm under. Or maybe you have like a Job, oh, I'm Job. And Job's story is a pretty extreme story and there's a lot to learn. I've never personally met anyone who's actually going through Job. Now there's things we can learn from Job, but beware, if you start just quoting Job all the time, you're missing the overcomer message in your life. So it's, that's really important to understand. Number five, you constantly replay the same painful stories of your past with little to no fruit of healing or growth. I call this unredemptive sharing. Okay. What I mean by that is that I believe in honest sharing and I, I do it all. I do it myself. I go, Hey man, I'm having a tough day today and I just need to talk it out. Right. But it needs to be fruitful and leading to a place where you start to go, all right, I can do this. I'm going to, that's where sharing becomes fruitful. Right. But in a victim mindset, your sharing is, is unproductive. It's in loops that just keep repeating and there's no revelation, there's no helpful conversation, there's no movement. Now, all of us need to go around the mountain a bunch of times over and over again till we learn. And God's gracious and merciful. I've gone around the same mountain hundreds of times, okay? But at some point I had to go, wait a second, I'm repeating the same patterns over and over again. Something's wrong with this thinking That's it might sound good, but it's attached to victim thinking. I need to attach to the now word of what God's doing in my life or I can get stuck. If you find yourself telling stories, if you're in a situation where a lot of times you tell the story of your past and people go, yeah, I remember you telling me that. That's a nice way of them saying, you're repeating your stories over and over again. You keep sharing them. It's just a good signal of awareness. Um, The problem is, is that you get attention with those painful stories. And that's a tough pill to swallow to go, all right, yep, I'm doing that. And oftentimes it becomes your style of relating. You relate to other people through the style of your painful past. So it's like, even when you meet new people within a few moments, it's like, you got to tell them that painful thing that happened. You got to let them know because there's a, there's almost like a case the enemy wants you to carry uh, a, a almost courtroom case of, hey, I'm a victim. This is what I've been through. And you need to know that because that's where, that's why I am where I am right now. And it can have facts to it, but it's not the truth that sets you free. You following with me on this so far? I hope so. Let's get to number six. Number six is you often speak of being stuck. Stuck is a word you use a lot. You're stuck. You're backed against the wall. You're in a corner. When you're stuck, it's it, it, this is very, very simple. When you're stuck, it, it just reveals you've hit a upper limit. You've hit a limitation. And what you need is you need new understanding and new decisions, new application. When you say, I feel stuck, it shows you're inexperienced in this area. And you need to be taught and you need to learn and you need to become teachable for new insight, new thinking, new decisions. That's what's needed, but you got to want it. Jesus said to the man at the pool of Bethesda, who had a victim mentality, do you want to be healed? And you have to ask that for yourself. Do I really, really want this? Otherwise, the being stuck, feeling stuck is going to win over. Number seven, you don't take in the encouragement, the helpful feedback or instruction. 
So there's one of two things you do. If somebody encourages you, you could feel better for the moment and then you want to keep going back to that person. So you keep relaying those victim stories to get that feeling again. Oh, it makes you feel good. Thank you for praying for me. Every time you tell them, they pray for you. Oh, let me pray for you. Every time they tell you something encouraging. But over time, it exhausts them. But here's the truth. When somebody gives you an instruction or an insight, do you take it, meditate on it, and apply it? Or do you realize, well, I felt good in that moment. I'm going to repeat my story again. This goes back to you're sharing it, but you're not listening. If you feel stuck, you need to listen to the people who talk to you because they'll stretch you. At times, they'll even make you angry because they'll poke at something that you feel like, I've already done that. I've already done that. I've already gone through those things. I've already done those steps. And maybe you have, and maybe you just need to return to them. Or maybe you need to return to them again with a new mindset. Okay? Number eight, you feel powerless quite often to do anything about your circumstance. You just feel like I'm too tired. I'm too weak. I don't have it in me. You might think I'm too old. I'm too far gone. I've been through too much. So then you believe you have no energy to do this. You believe you can't break free. Number nine, your story is disempowering you, but it feels normal to you. It feels safe. The truth is the victim story can make you actually feel good because it's familiar, but it's killing you. And I encourage you, look at the story you're living in. What's the narrative? What's the self-talk? How do you respond to your situations? Because usually we do with the story that we're carrying, right? So are you living by an empowered story? You may need to sit down and actually write out, here's what I've been through, here's where I am, and here's what I'm headed, and here's what I am saying yes to in God's way of thinking in my life, okay? Number 10, you constantly feel you get the short end of the stick. You constantly feel you get the short end of the stick. And when stuff happens where you're ignored or you don't get the breakthrough, you go, see, see, keeps happening to me. It's the victim story that wants validation. It's rejection that wants, wants you to feel rejected. Rejection wants to be rejected. That's why I teach so much on the rejection mindset because it's the game changer. It uproots the victim mindset and breaks you free to go, wow, I can make decisions now. I have the ability to choose. I can be loved. I can know who I am. I can live powerfully. It's a whole different ball game. But the victim story is always out to keep you thinking, I get the short end of the stick. Number 11, you tolerate abusive and negative relationships. You tolerate relationships that are even disempowering. So you don't make decisions for boundaries. You don't stick up for yourself. And you use those abusive actions that other people do to say, see, they keep doing this to me. So that's why I am where I am. And, and, and the difficult thing is you can actually keep people around you that don't challenge you. I watch many people, their friendships go to the limit where the friendship is now a sharpening, challenging one. And most people find a way to sabotage and back away. Oh, that person was to this, that person was to that. And really what it was, it was a sharpening moment to break the victim mentality and go, I need to step up into being an overcomer. I do have choices. I do. I can decide. I can choose my attitude right now. An ad, my attitude is a choice. My attitude is not under the power of somebody else. I have the ability to choose it, okay? Number 12, and this is really, really important because this identifies how much our victimized history can affect us. You do not know what you want. You know, you talk about your marriage and how it's limiting and so forth, and someone asks you, well, what do you want? And you go, I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that. What do you want out of your life? Let me ask you that right now. What do you want for your future? If you don't know how to answer that with clarity in a way that involves your decisions, then you're listening to a victim mindset. So in victim thinking, life is always just happening to us and we're just trying to react. When you become an overcomer, you set the tone. This is where I'm headed. This is what I'm going to think on. This is what I'm going to focus my attention on. So sometimes victims will say, well, yeah, I do know what I want. But what they share is a like lottery kind of situation where something falls out of the sky 
or it is a God rescue me kind of thing. It's a God changing the circumstance for you rather than um, it's where God is taking the place of your ability to decide. You know, the, the scriptures talk about choose you this day. Who's going to have the upper, the edge? Who's going to have the dominant influence over your thinking? Choose. You get to choose. What are you going to listen to? What are you going to focus on? What's going to be the narrative that you're going to be living by? And so sometimes people say, well, I just want whatever God wants. Oh, that's a Christian cop out. Because again, God is giving you ability to decide where you're going to head. So if any of this has spoken to you, please take a moment, get exposing the rejection mindset to experience love, know who you are and empower your relationships. That's what I'm all about. But the rejection route will prevent you from it. It will keep you under limitation. It will keep you under twisted belief systems and it will keep you separated from the power of what God's love can do in your life. And so if you've liked this 12 signs you live with a victim mentality, please go to my website, markdehesus.com. Would you take a moment to support us, to support this work? And I look forward to sharing more and more empowering videos to help you with everything that you're going through and learning to be an overcomer. God bless you.